<laughs> so you've heard that rats are dirty. Oh boy. Have let I... me catch let me hold you up right there. What if I told you that not only rats are not dirty, they're so clean that I allow my rats to eat the food out of my teeth and mouth and I record videos of it and put it on the internet. I don't care what you have to say because I've done it. Um <laughs> I am very ready to believe that this is like as safe and hygienic as the uh, oh, no. as the community says it is. I wouldn't let but a person is- do that to me. <laughs> I wouldn't that- let my fucking wife do that, bro. Like- <laughs> I think that's the thing that gets a bit lost sometimes. And there's like a lot of fun banter in the comment the rats section do this anytime. To each other, even yes, they do. Okay, yes, this right. is a behavior, and it's one of the things that like. Is I think genuine evidence for the fact that rats bond as deeply with people as they do with other rats. With other rats, this is definitely yeah, a reciprocal totally. relationship. Turn the lights on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> Since the dawn of time, civilized man has yoked powerful beasts to do his bidding. Happy wealthy family with medically impossible dog. Thin, sickly child with the bugs. Zuma with content frog. But who of these animal snatchers is strongest? This is Aiden. This is Patrick. And we have immersed ourselves undercover among the owners of ferrets, rats, snakes, birds and monkeys. And today, using a perfect mix of variables including virtue, agility, brute strength, emotion, and ability to inflict mental distress on Patrick, we will rank definitively the greatest internet pet community. Come for the clever animals. And stay because your diseased brain algorithm requires content to be arranged in meaningless hierarchy. Educate Educate yourself. yourself. This is the definitive ranking of online pet owners. So the first type of pet owner I wanted to talk about today is a type of pet owner I've had a very special affinity for for quite a while, and that is the ferret owner. Genetically, they're a bit closer to a dog than a rat. Like you see them and you kind of think that they're like rodent-like. They're they're, they're not fully like a mouse, but they're not fully like a dog. Um, And so yeah, they do need a lot of time like outside of their cage. The type of content you'll see online in the ferret community is like, totally unlike any other like pet community i've seen like this guy like he's been posting in these ferret groups for like years he takes photos of his like animals and then does little like comic strips with them people like his ferret comics more than like people basically will probably like anything that i've done in my entire life <laughs> yeah like, i was gonna just... say with like 78 reactions you're looking at like a higher viewership than the the, the like the imprint comic strip that you would get like a, a kathy yeah. in 2021 <laughs> is probably pulling fewer reacts yeah though yeah what's kathy what's kathy doing i've been in these fairy groups for a long time and some of the screenshots i'm about to show you they're like i took them a long time ago because i've been kind of like <laughs> I've been collecting ferret group screenshots for a while. This Every, whole, I think this whole project is just an excuse for you. Like, you need an outlet for I your need ferret out, screenshots. I need, I, the world needs to know. Gives you a little bit of an insight into the lives of these people and what makes them so close to their ferrets and, like, frankly, not as close to everyone else in their life. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm 25. Like, it's it's like relatable as well. Like, as someone <laughs> with like no other like yeah, this is connections a, a, in my life these well. memes like very readily appropriated. Like, if you changed like the father taking photo of child one and replaced the ferret with like a deck of Magic the Gathering cards, that's just my life. That's just yeah. your life. Uh, in the same way that you could slip any item into the like bottom right quadrant of yes. that like. Uh, dad taking photo of child meme. Yeah. Like, I feel like this kind of content is like, it's kind of a litmus test for whether you can actually measure a community, right? Like this, this degree of dedication is like a necessary condition of, 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 I think most online spaces. Or do you think like, is there something uniquely ferrety about? Yeah. A lot of the time there is this obsession, but like a lot of the time it isn't as like measured against like their connection to they're like bad connections to people right. around them. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's like a lot of the time it's like, oh, I, I, I didn't sleep last night because I was too busy playing like League of Legends or like what have you. But like this is like, 
Yeah, I hate other people. Like <laughs> I only like like my like cute little like animal. Although, yeah, I mean to be fair, you see that in you know the the, the t-shirt that's like uh, I'm about to level up, and you look like just another XP. Like I mean, it, it it is just that for another audience. Like I think there's a lot of people in these lives that are saying like, why do you have such a connection with like something? That it's just you know, it's just a ferret, and this and this post is like just a ferret that's a lot of money for just a ferret they don't understand the distance traveled the time spent or the costs involved for just a ferret i also realized halfway through when i was reading this poem it has the same structure as like like a white guy slam poem (laughs) if you too think it's just a ferret then you will need to understand phrases like just a friend, just a sunrise, or just a prophet. <laughs> just a ferret brings into my life the very essence of friendship, trust, and pure unbridled joy. So the next time you hear the phrase, just a ferret, just smile. Because they just don't understand. It's intense and okay. Are you seeing? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I'm now? seeing what you're seeing, but I also can't begrudge it. Like I think that this is like no, I don't begrudge it either. Okay, cool. I just, yeah, I, I just there's something there. My suspicion, yeah, is that if you in quotation marks put the quote like put the phrase "just a dog" into Google, you will get. If not this, very like a very similar poem to this from a larger pet community that has been appropriated by a smaller pet community. I reckon this is universal. To an extent, I agree with you, but like a dog will mourn your death. <laughs> ferret just slips ferret, in and nibbles a, your bones. A ferret will absolutely nibble your bones. This is an animal that exists to find rodent. There is a Facebook page I'm very fond of. <laughs> It's called the Horde. Oh God! This is every so every single ferret, oh my God ferret owner in the world is just this like incredibly gentle, yeah, bleeding heart type that like loves their animals. And there's like <laughs> one guy uh, on Facebook that's just like, I love that they eat things. Like, he, he just like yeah, will chuck like a like a freshly killed like hen in there and he just loves watching like the horde go to town there is an exception to every rule and then like right next to that they'll just be <laughs> right next to that they'll just be like the cutest thing you've seen some sweet girls entire- yeah <laughs> and i think it's funny personally but like i've cried like two times in three years <laughs> So what, who am I to say that like there's anything wrong about this? <laughs> I've cried like two times in the last three weeks just <laughs> looking at rack content. <laughs> there's also this thing I was curious about with the rainbow bridges. Have you heard of this? So it's a, it's another thing that's taken from like I think it was dogs originally. Uh, it, it's just like a euphemism for pet death, right? Like it's uh, yeah. crossing over uh, to to the afterlife because famously uh, cats and dogs don't go to heaven. When the animal dies, they go to the rainbow bridge. Everything's fun for them there. All of their injuries are healed. They haven't been hit by a car in the rainbow bridge. <laughs> I believe that's the point of that phrase. <laughs> Your pet has not been hit by a car for eternity. Only in the short <laughs> moments before they passed away. And then it, like halfway through, it's like the animals are all happy and content except for one small thing they miss someone very special to them who had been left behind it's like bro that even in the perfect fantasy these pets can't be happy without you (laughs) we're gonna talk about rats okay quick crash course in rat history we are not talking about the little, mouse. Do a little. Forget about him. Not a rat. <laughs> not a rat. He's clean. He wears a jumper. He drives a car. Rats don't drive cars. No. Rats are cunning puppeteers. But, but Patrick, are you, are you saying by proxy that rats are dirty? This is what big, big everything other than rat would have you believe. That they are a filthy animal. That they are a cunning animal. That they are a university anarchist. Oh, uh, that they no, are. Thank you. That it's an adult man that lived in a child's <laughs> pocket for three years uh, at magician school. Wait, who's that? <laughs> it's Timothy Spall, who played Peter Pettigrew in the. Oh uh, yes, movies. of course. You, you got the actor <laughs> photo. <Is that> the <laughs> <character>? <laughs> okay, I'm. <laughs> I'm. I like that decision. <laughs> Do you think that he I don't think Timothy Spall is a rat. No, okay. no, I think he plays Peter Pettigrew, the character, yeah. who's a rat. Like the snake 
and the, we'll get to the reptiles True. later. These are the animals that like are, humans are evolutionarily mm. conditioned to like not like. Disgusting. Yuck. Yeah. Ugh. Except that's not true at all. Welcome to my rat rebrand. I am actually doing, I, I consider myself now an extension of the work that I think every rat owner has been doing for a very long time. And I think it's a kind of work that you have to opt into when you decide to become the owner of a rat. The domestication is itself a rebrand. Evolutionarily, the popularly domesticated rat, it is popularly known as the fancy rat. They are a really, really sweet creature. Oh. Um, unlike the ferret, there is absolutely no doubt rats love human company. Yes. Uh, and they're really? incredibly social creatures. The social bonds that rats form with each other and with humans are incredibly intense wow. uh, and like deeply reciprocal. They're such social creatures that you can't actually own just one rat, generally. Like, oh. it's quite distressing for a rat to live alone. Yeah. The groups online are, like, dominated by people with incredibly elaborate and majestic setups with, like, dozens of rats in these... Uh, they call them mischief mansions, um, which I quite like. But again, again rebrand, better than cage. Yeah, 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 yes, cage. yeah, true. Fancy rats in a mischief mansion. Yeah. Uh, not plague bastards uh, <laughs> in a dirty sewer. Yeah. The prejudice creeps into the entirety of the popular consciousness. And she has taught her rat to fetch money from her purse. And their little That's the one place I don't want a rat to be. <laughs> that admittedly is not a trick to teach a creature that you're trying to like reinvigorate the popular I image of, right? I think a lot of the prejudice around the rat, it really weighs on a dynamic that uh, is front of mind for just about anyone who owns them as a pet, which is like the way that rats breed and way they the way they reproduce. I think that is one key dynamic and it's the revulsion and the sense of like filthiness that really defines the, the public perception of the animal and it's not unfair in optimal conditions this is the rat math uh, a single breeding pair of rats uh, can be 15,000 rats by the end of a year oh my god and it means that the community is like incredibly guarded against and careful in how it talks about breeding and reproduction. Rats are in heat every four to five days oh after they god. reach the age of five weeks of age. Well, where do they think rats come from? Like they're bred? So there are these divides in the pet communities between the industry of breeders that breed the animals and the like consumers of mm. that. I guess unless your pets are rescue, but like, where do you think the, re the rescues come from? They come from breeders. So and this like is a, a really, it is a lively conversation in this, in this community, particularly. Um, I think that there's like a hierarchy of mm. how to source your rat. There's like a, a lot of, a lot of groups, a lot of Facebook groups, particularly like explicitly ban the, the discussion of like breeding rats and those channels sort of focus on like rehoming and wild rats yes uh which is they, they, they rehome there are wild still rats. there are still people who like find rats in the wild like a nest is in an urban place that's getting cleaned out the small animal specialist oh, hosp no. hospital like won't always necessarily like cull them all how do they check them for diseases surely there would be disease. i mean i guess you just take them to a vet same as any other and their claws no imagine if you went other. to veterinary school for like seven years and you come out the other side and the guy's like, yeah, it's a rat. I found him at the, down the street. Is he dirty? Does he have a disease? <laughs> well, so in one of the groups that I was in, uh, someone actually shared their budget for rat care. Odds are, if you're a vet and someone's brought a rat to you to ask how dirty it is, you're going to make a lot of money because yeah, like true. The, the, the economies of rats, like pet economy doesn't scale to size. Yeah. Like if anything, it's more expensive to get the tiny forceps and the tiny scalpel. Oh, that means you true. can actually take care of a little rat. Oh they God. spent $14,000 and I'm pretty sure it's US money oh on my vet bills. God. Practical rodent breeding is an exceptional community of uh, people who... Uh, like, just... <laughs> Are you reading the description? I'm just tired. <laughs> the, 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 um, 
Um, good questions. Good questions. <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to any of these questions. Yeah, they're, they're, the groups are really practically oriented. Like, yeah. I think the in the same way that a rat is resourceful, I think rat owners are resourceful. Mm. Uh, this stigma is, like, uh, a thing that is actively talked about in the community as well. Yeah. And underneath one of those videos was uh, user Ratonicus who says, uh, this is the best video on this topic. I have two ratties and word got around at my school and words were thrown at me such as weird, <laughs> creepy, sewer man, etc. <laughs> now I have a defense for myself. You really are the best YouTuber and the reason I got my rats. Thanks. Uh, um, I have a word of advice for all of the young people watching this video. If you're being bullied at school, that sucks. It shouldn't happen to you. It shouldn't happen to anyone. I would advise you against posting the actual insults that people are calling you at school on the internet simply because it doesn't matter what they are it is funny I don't make the rules okay I just I just look at sewer man <laughs> I'm sorry it's something that yeah the community tries to actively work against and I think sometimes overcompensates for Yes. Uh, and this is an example of that. <laughs> so you've heard that rats are dirty. Oh boy. Let me I... catch, let me hold you up right there. What if I told you that not only rats are not dirty, they're so clean that I allow my rats to eat the food out of my teeth and mouth and I record videos of it and put it on the internet. I don't care what you have to say because I've done it. Um... <laughs> No. I am very ready to believe that this is like as safe and hygienic as the uh, oh, no. as the community says it is. I wouldn't let but a person is, do that to me. <laughs> I wouldn't that, let my fucking wife do that, bro. Like, <laughs> I think that's the thing that gets a bit lost sometimes. Um, but yeah. Oh. To this end, it is a practical pet. You'll never need to uh, aqua pick again. And there's like a lot of fun banter in the comment the section. Do this anytime. to each other, even? Yes, they do. Okay. Yes, this right. is a behavior. And it's one of the things that, like, is, I think, genuine evidence for the fact that rats bond as deeply with people as they do with other rats. With other rats. This is definitely yeah, a reciprocal totally. relationship. Oh, damn. Forgot, yeah. to, forgot to turn the lights on. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> so <laughs> What the heck are they doing in there? <laughs> and the sum of it all is that I have fallen in love with rats. This is a rat that did artwork. Um, they, they lead short and incredibly precious lives. And I think they're supported by a very loving uh, and generous community. So next time someone tries to badmouth a rat, rats are lovely. Um, and I would love to be owned by a rat owner. <laughs> Okay, so the next pet owner we're talking about today is the snake owner. The, the reptile community is a lot darker. <laughs> they don't even fucking name them. They're just like, this is my brown python. He can kill you in five seconds. His name is Death. <laughs> There's something so uh, fabulously impotent about the idea of like 200 snakes inside us <laughs> all. Inside, really of, you, inside of you, there is 200 snakes. <laughs> there is quite a clear difference between snake owners and other pet owners. It's much more about collecting. It's much more about like dominating that wild ferociousness of um, these animals. They're kind of cold-blooded nature. They won't tell you that, obviously. There's a lot of discussion around regulating people that own venomous, and there's a lot of fierce animosity. That's why, like, a lot of the people in this community are very conservative. But you'll see them say time and time again that, oh, these animals are misunderstood, they're this, that, they're that. They're, people think they're, like, yeah, cold-blooded killers. And it's like, they literally are cold-blooded killers. <laughs> Bring in the snake man. Okay, here is snake man number one. I call this personality this animal wants to kill me and i'm in awe <laughs> yeah this is the gentler snake owner this is the one that is more interested in educating and, and positive stuff they maybe feel a bit weaker themselves and they're like in awe of how powerful these animals are all right we had a lot of people ask what do you do when you get bitten by a snake we just wait until they're finished and they release themselves so that we don't damage them trying to get them off of us. <laughs> it takes time.
He posted this in uh, one of the Facebooks I'm, I'm in. I also made it into a little album cover. <laughs> <laughs> the Olive Python in these photos is a two-year-old. Yes. <laughs> it's a two-year-old effectively no as cranky bitch. She will bite every chance she gets. We never try and pry the snakes off us as it has the possibility of damaging the snake's mouth by teeth that stay attached to our hand rather than the snake's mouth. The last thing you want is for your snake to get a mouth infection. Boy, if the snake gets a mouth infection, it means you're more at risk of infection the next time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nerves. Instead, just sit down and have a smoke. Kappa, or if you're stressed, try a stiff drink. Yeah, you, you, know, you do get the, the gentler side of the snake community. And th- there's a there's a content creator online who I've chosen to represent this group of people. Hi there. Hi there. Well, hi there. Well, hi there. Well, hi there. Hi there. Well, hi there. Guess what religion that guy is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that a Mormon man? Yes, that is correct. You have guessed, cor- you have guessed completely correctly. <laughs> I wonder how you did it. Next up, the category of this animal wants to kill me, but it actually doesn't. Um, yeah, this is the people that are really defensive about snakes and how dangerous they are. They are really obsessed with talking about how like safe they are and how they won't. If you're good at what you do, you know, they'll never bite you and it's just a scam. So before we saw the King Cobra that Clint was handling uh-huh. was from a place called the New England Reptile Distributors. They are huge. Their, their YouTube channel has like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. This video has millions and millions of views. They have a Twitch stream. They have a really popular Twitch stream where they just watch reptile videos. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional, I do this every day. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional, I do this every day. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional, I do this every day. I didn't edit this, this is how they edit it. I'm a professional, I do this every day. Teams of two. Oh my god. Yes, whatever you're handling, these guys, it's really good to have more than one person with you. Yeah, and I don't count. Start unraveling the tail. Yeah, he's like, you do need more than one person. Anyway, in comes the fucking 11 year old. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to, they don't need to be able to get the snake off you. They just right. need to look more like food than they need. The next, uh, <laughs> the next archetype amongst the snake owners I wanted to briefly bring up today. They recognize the animal wants to kill them. These are people that have like extreme amounts of risk-taking behavior. Down this guy called Tyler Nolan, who his claim to fame was being on the tattoo reality show uh, Ink Master. Um, he is this guy on the on the far right. The he live handles venomous snakes quite a lot. And this guy is definitely an, an entertainer. That's typical with the cobra. That's the shit. Yeah. So this is a snake that like kills people Mm. all the time Mm. and there's two additional pieces of context here which is that a it's about to storm so snakes experience like extra anxiety um as a storm is about to happen just like dogs right and um the other thing is that the snake is in shed which means that it can't say i don't exactly understand why but they can't see as well which means they're also more ready to strike as they can't see what's happening around them. They just, yeah, like... Good time to hug my snake. Yeah, exactly. And this guy is... And I've seen a lot of people live handling snakes researching this video, and I've never seen somebody handle a snake as stupidly as this guy. Like, I swear to fucking God, it's like, it's so anxiety-inducing watching it. Now Tom steps in. Tom's going to try to get his attention on him. Cobra still does not even care about Tom right now. What are they trying to do? Doesn't even care. They're trying to get to hood up, which means like to put their their. Oh, put his jacket on before it rains. Yeah. (laughs) Oof. So now this cobra is holding on to my hand. I gotta rip it off and haul ass to the hospital. There is so much wrong with this video. It's so like unsettling to watch. Owning venomous snakes that can kill you. There's a rush from that that's gonna go away when you realize that if you probably keep it in, in the cage for its whole life, it's not gonna kill you. you. You know, so you get it out, you handle it a bit, and then yeah, eventually before long, you're doing things as stupid as this guy because you're trying to chase that rush. And you will not feel that rush completely 
until a snake has like bitten you and almost killed you. And this guy still handles venomous snakes all the time. He went back in this video, he goes back to the guy's house whose snake it was and handles the exact same snake again. And it's so funny because the guy is, the guy, they're talking about it, they're right in front of it. And the snake's just looking at him like, I thought I didn't have to look at your stupid fucking face again. <laughs> you really have to ask yourself like, like, do these people want to die? Men will literally handle shedding king cobras <laughs> when a storm is imminent rather than go to therapy. I got I got bit, I got bit, but luckily I did get bit on election, election day. day. Remember that? <laughs> election day in 2016. <laughs> This guy was the one Hillary voter that was going to turn Florida. I mean, he is definitely in Florida. Florida. He's he's definitely is, in he, Florida. Patrick, he's literally in Florida. <laughs> the other community that I spent some time with the last couple of weeks is the exotic bird community, but right. it's a very specific subset of the exotic bird community. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for the viewers' is benefit... Is this your... Did you make this... Chart? I mean, was it done with my hands? Yes. Was I using objectively true information uh, about the state of, uh, oh, of, of, of things? Also true. So there's a lot of birds you can talk about. Down the bottom left, you have the sort of utilitarian urban bird. Uh, like the quail, it lives in dirt. So a pigeon is more beautiful than a quail? I think so. I think pigeons are gorgeous. Fuck you, man. This is just hey, rat, you know pre this is rat prejudice all over again. Oh, the oh, pigeon cops oh. so much flack for being, for being great. Do you think a seagull is more beautiful than a quail? Yeah. Or a duck? Have you seen a duck, bro? They're beautiful. Ducks are beautiful. Maybe I've rated duck too low. They're all tens. Do um, people own emu? Bro! You walk in a fucking ostrich, you duck cunt! It's an emu! The, yeah, budgies, the budgie parakeet, there's like, the, those are like the really small but beautiful birds, and I think the community around them is like quite distinct from the birds that I actually want to talk about today, yes. uh, which is the cluster of mid sized, very beautiful birds. We're talking uh, cockatoos, we're talking macaws, we're yeah. talking uh, the true parrots. Birds that are bigger than the small cage birds. Uh, but obviously not so big that they could never be tamed. No one yeah. would dream of taming uh, the albatross or mm -hmm. the vulture. It's mostly macaw owners, to be honest. Okay. Um, and they have a very particular energy. Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel now. Uh, and this is a trend that we're going to see again and again. Uh, the people who have big, beautiful birds... Uh, are small and ugly. <laughs> Sorry, not this guy. This guy seems fine. He seems great. I'm just saying, in general, is that the... <laughs> not him. I just... With other people, is that what you're saying? This just domesticatable, but very beautiful and very exotic kind of animal. They are very much, I think, a prestige pet. Uh, in a way that I don't trust. Um, the birds know they're beautiful. Their owners know that they're beautiful. The uh, birds know they're beautiful. The birds know they're beautiful. The they can speak beautiful. and they can recognize themselves. Like, they pass the identity test when they look in a mirror. Oh, Some of them. If I was a bird, I think I was beautiful. So. <laughs> You'd be right. All birds are beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, Am I beautiful? <laughs> we can talk about this later. Um, the no, that's a no. That's a no. <laughs> that's a no. The bird scale. Yeah. No. It's fine. Let's talk about birds. Lower than even okay, a, yeah, you're uglier than even the ugliest quail. <laughs> But yeah. bird owners are like native content creators. Yeah. Um, they, like the bird itself is a showy animal and the owner, I think, uh, in terms of like the visible parts of the community is a relatively mm. showy owner as well. Um, I've got a couple thumbnails here and you really get a sense of it. There's like big, like the fact that they're verified, I think is very telling. The fact that there are verified bird owners is like, uh, I think a sign of the community. Verified. I think there is far more tendency for the bird to be like an asset than like a rat yeah with these big beautiful animals yeah there's there's a cost that comes along with them mm. people that more often than not are willing to pay that cost are people that are going to get some return on their investment i'll get into this in a little more detail in a sec but like with birds particularly i think that's quite dangerous based on what i've read for the animal uh but before we get to that i'm going to play a quick game of how much is this bird first up we have a blue and gold macaw it's one of the most common exotic birds uh i think in australia this one is pre-loved you can tell because the man's given a little kiss yes uh how much would you pay for this bird yeah someone at work was just talking about paying eight thousand dollars for yeah. a dog so it's like 
how much it's like it's definitely rarer than a dog but is it <laughs> is it rarer than that is dog it rarer is it rarer than, than one dog um i'm gonna just guess four thousand dollars damn you're good you're pretty good uh it's a three and a half thousand dollar oh. bird here is uh, another photo Let's of go. that bird. I, is, it, is this like um? If you get it exactly right, like... I buy the bird for you. <laughs> <laughs> is this um, like a, what's called the Price is Right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Closest without going over. Yeah. This was the wow. second photo in the government. Why is he size. getting rid of the bird? Did you find that out? I think he was a breeder. And this is the other thing. Like yeah. The reason that I went to Gumtree as a digital community is because like it is like quite commercial in a lot of online spaces. Like you look for rat groups and it's people who are like, is my rat fat or does it have a tumor? You look for like bird groups and it's like uh, a huge number of Queenslanders hustling to sell these birds for thousands of dollars. <laughs> Next bird, the, the gig's kind of up. We know they're pretty exy. Yeah. How much would you pay for this bird? I'm gonna guess uh, $5,000. It's an eight and a half thousand dollar Oh bird. my God, because it's younger, it would be more. And it's a lot to pay for an animal. It's also not enough to pay for the kind of life that these birds lead, I don't think. Um, next bird. This is a bird, this is red parrot. It's a scarlet macaw, but it looks like red parrot. And that yes. I think is like maybe quintessential bird. Yes. Like if someone said, think of a bird. Yeah. I'd probably think of a parrot What's that looks red like parrot this. from? Is that like a pirate thing? Oh, it's not a character. It's just a color and a bird. Yes. Now, uh, if I feel like I've seen this bird before, like in some kind of pirate thing. Like yeah, yeah. Captain it is a good pirate Hook, bird. Captain Hook has one of these or something like that. Mm. Now, this is not the bird from <laughs> Captain Hook. That is that bird would. <laughs> that would be a bit, bit more a bit very more expensive, expensive bird. than what you'd get in. Uh, uh, Wood Ridge <laughs> Queensland. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm gonna go for 7k. It is a $13,000. Oh bird. my god. It's the pirate bird, man. That is, it is the pirate mm-hmm. bird. When you want some a, a trademarked piece of IP, you pay extra for the registration. The last bird, a bird that you famously think is uglier than a quail. I'm gonna guess this is a racing bird. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna guess this is. Um, this bird can go very fast, um, and it doesn't go in any random direction. It goes in a specific direction, which makes it a good racing bird. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to guess $15,000. Uh, this is the most expensive bird ever sold at auction. It's a oh $1.9 million dollar pigeon. What the fuck? Its name, is, its name is New Kim, and it may not be the fastest pigeon on earth yet, but there's a good chance that it will be. Uh, I think this is obscene. I think birds cost an obscene amount of money and it feeds into the culture. I tried to find out how, mo- how much the most expensive rat at auction uh, <laughs> ever went for. I, I will not claim to know what portion of the community takes good care of their birds. I, I think that most of the people that I saw in bird groups do care about the birds that they have. Parrots and like that whole like cluster of like uh, really hot birds that are like medium sized. They all are among, like, the longest-lived and most intelligent creatures on Earth. Like, macaws often live, like, 50 to 80 years long. If you get mm. one as a pet at 16, like, you... To take, like, truly responsible care of the thing, you need to be thinking about what you're doing at 66. And no one at 16 has even thought of being 66. It's pretty normal for a parrot to be rehomed 8 to 11 times in oh its lifetime. God. They're like flat screens. <laughs> Like rats, they bond really deeply with people. Um, And when those, like, relationships break down, like, it has really serious consequences from the birds. If you do rehome a bird that has bonded with its previous owner, they tend to pick up a bunch of really antisocial behaviours. Like, they just scream and they pull out their own feathers. It's, like, really, really distressing stuff. Yeah, I, I think that there is, to be honest, yeah, incredible cruelty of putting a bird in a cage just think of imagine if you were like you could sit down all day but like the ceiling was like here some of the most uplifting footage that i saw uh is like like free flying is just like a thing that like a lot of bird bird owners do and there's a lot of advocacy for online um and it is very, very beautiful to watch a $4,000 bird just, like, rip <laughs> rings around the oval. Wait, so is the idea, like, it's going to come back? Yeah, some of them can be trained. Like, you can train a bird to come back. I just think it's the kind of work that not owner- not every owner will necessarily do. And the idea that there is a single bird in a cage is just enough to, like, upset the whole enterprise for me. Don't they ever just, like, be like, oh, you mean that thing? Yeah, I'm not going to go into that again. I'm just going to... 
go be a bird. But I think it's probably a function of the bonding. <laughs> this is a... Uh, this is an... Um... This is the intro to an anime? <laughs> 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 this is an Indonesian macaw owner. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that the only kind of bird content that I'm in favour of is content where TikTok generates the disclaimer that the action in this video could result in serious <laughs> injury. That's so beautiful. Um, that's really awesome. I wish that bird could do that all the time instead of once per week or whatever it is. Doesn't uh, seem to mind. That's so wholesome. It is very wholesome. If you like pet or stroke uh, a like sexually mature female parrot in like particular places, you can like drive the bird to compulsively lay eggs. Like they, the the bonds that they form with people are like similar to rats. Like I think that they like are as intense as the bonds that they form within their own species. So there are definitely birds out there that love their owners and definitely owners out there that love their birds. Yeah. You, they... can, you can teach a bird to <laughs> yeah. <do> what now? <laughs> Sorry, you teach can a teach a bird. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what? You don't, man? T- <laughs> you don't teach the bird to lay eggs. It's like an accident. Like, the bird loves you. Or so you're just much. pressing the lay eggs button. <laughs> they were gonna lay eggs anyway, man. They don't, but they don't, unless they're like. Parrots particularly don't lay eggs. Um, unless they're particular. <laughs> what are they doing to you, man? <laughs> like, yeah, I petted my bird in a way that it laid eggs. That's me that loves me. <laughs> Is everything okay? I thought this guy, um, who's a YouTuber, um, really <laughs> summed it up really well. <laughs> yeah, the, the, those two videos were filmed like, at one year apart from each other, and that really sums up just how bad an idea owning a monkey is. You know, is having a monkey such a bad idea? You think, you know, monkeys, they're close to humans. Humans, we like each other. We hang out with each other all the time. Why can't we hang out with a monkey? Firstly, they piss and shit everywhere. It's like, they're obviously incredibly intelligent animals, which is why they're intelligent. They're too intelligent to just go to the bathroom in one place. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't see the need to, and you can't make them. Um, so that's why you see... Um, monkeys like often domesticated when they are domesticated in diapers because they they are I thought constantly that was just a bit from the no no they, they are constantly pissing and shitting to like mark their territory monkeys are like people you know they might not like you and even if they like you they might not like your family or your friends and they might unfortunately like attack them and bite them and monkey owners i'm sure monkeys in the wild are different but like the owners of all these other pets, like ferrets or whatever, ferret owners will tell you, yeah, sometimes a ferret will bite, but that's just because they're anxious because they've been in their cage for a few weeks. Whereas like monkey owners are just kind of like, eh, I guess he just doesn't like you. Like, it's like... It's, it's like trying to explain away a human that bites. Yeah. You know, they are have, do have more ind- individual tendencies than other animals, right? right? Because they're primates. Or maybe it's just because those monkey owners don't want to reflect on the incredibly cruel practices that are inherently involved in owning a monkey. And I, I, to me, I think the saddest thing about a lot of this is that monkeys, when their owners decide that, you know what, uh, I think I'm kind of done with this monkey thing, um, they don't fit very well into sanctuaries. Just like if you'd grown up around monkeys until age 10, you wouldn't go into like year three very well. So that part is, is really screwed up as well. Yeah, they are very cute, but you know, it... <laughs> I'm already forgetting everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> this is me uh, watching my mom have a conversation uh, at the supermarket. <laughs> Well, they are, they're just them. like children. They are just like yeah. children. They're children you don't respect or love as your own. Yeah, exactly. Um, but if you'll divert your eyes away from that incredibly cute monkey on I the right wanna. side of the screen, um, yeah, you also see in some of these groups, like, yeah, the injuries they cause. Contributed to the Alban capuchin bites. <laughs> It did kind of confuse me because it's like, hey, if you're owning a monkey, monkeys are like people, you, you want a bigger one, one that's as like a human as possible, right? It's like, why don't they own like chimps and whatever? And it's like, because a chimp will actually just mull you to death. <laughs> like when they get big enough, they're incredibly strong 
it's there is nothing to stop a chimp from killing like the, you if um, it wants to. Like the the scene at the beginning of two thousand one, a space odyssey. Yes, they will. Kick, they will bring just, the rock down. They on your will skull. discover tools and don't they will let use them. To don't end let your, your chimp. If you do choose to get a chimp as a pet, do not let them go near the black obelisk. Um, if you have a so if you have a dog that bites, it gets put down. If yeah. you have a chimp that bites, it gets made into the into the freaking president, right? <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't I don't know where you were going with that. Yeah, George W. Bush, that's right. We're making this one old school. Yeah, just because they aren't big enough to cause serious damage, it doesn't mean that they don't want to. With every pet, you've got a honeymoon period, right? Mm-hmm. Monkey owners, even in that honeymoon period, are extremely distraught. Um, so, as you can see, they are very hyper. Uh, and whenever I talk, he likes Jack. Don't bite. Whenever I talk, he likes to go like attack my mouth or see. I don't really know what he's trying to do. I think he's trying to like see what's in it. Like I'm all I'm so like, viscerally like, like very bad behavior annoyed, but like watching um, this happen to another person. Just a heads up if you're looking. If you want an animal to constantly look inside your own mouth, trouble. please uh, he's get a rat. That's more human. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 You can understand how a human came from a chimp, right? Yeah. But you're like, how did it? How did like a rat become like a chimp? And like this, because <laughs> that's this how the world is the missing link. <laughs> you can see it having thoughts. You can yeah. see it like looking at things and really yeah. having thoughts so quickly. This is a capuchin. Um, oh, the diver is disgusting. Yeah, the way they play is just so constant. It just like yeah. never stops. See how his tongue is constantly coming out of his mouth. I think and that's I, probably because so they took its teeth out. Oh. Yeah, but it's so cruel, movie, man. It's really fucked up, honestly. It would just be another that's, yeah. step that it's wild to hear her saying exactly um, that. I absolutely support the ban on, on exotic pets, but to take animals from their homes where they've lived and they've developed and they've become um, so attached to their family yeah. is wrong. Right to it's like seeing them have fun together um, is like face, watching like you know, on the under their feet a really happen. like dysfunctional couple like (laughs) have fun together at a party or something the tender moments are like so shocking for how still they are and how sweet they are the only thing more irresponsible than getting him in the first place would be now that he's habituated to living with them to get rid of them yeah Um, yeah that's the sad truth of it this is probably my favorite uh, monkey video from online the monkey is called boo and the channel is called monkey boo um and this is a video of him taking him out for some Arby's in the car. There were some Monkey Boo specials. He's like, we've done this a bunch of times, but everybody loves it. We get- I already know what you get. Like, Let me get one of them turkey sliders. Uh, turkey you'll see <laughs> exactly, you're about to see exactly how the workers at Arby's are uh, going to respond to this man taking a monkey through the drive thru and it's not necessarily how I would react, let's put it that way. Hey, uh, I want to get three Monkey Boo specials. So I have three of the monkey salads uh, and a turkey slider. Yeah. If you were, if you didn't, not catching what just happened there, a man went with his monkey to the Arby's drive through and was like, can I have the monkey meal, please? And th- without, like, batting an eyelid, the woman was like... Yeah, of course I'll give you the monkey meal. <laughs> I think the thing I love about this guy is that I don't think the dad is like a born YouTuber, right? And so he has this incredibly, incredible like old man swag about him yeah. that like... Yeah, every professional in the content industry desperately needs the content to land. You can feel that. You can yeah, feel you that. can feel it. You have to, you have to do it. You have to watch it. You have to like it. Please, 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 please. When it's just dad in frame. It's just monkey dad. Just monkey dad. It's something, there's something really calming about yeah. it. I've spent this whole thing saying like, owning monkeys is one of the most fucked up things you can do. And I can't help but watch this guy's videos and be like, he's the one guy that can do it. Yeah. Or a sweet potato, don't you guys have sweet potato ones? <laughs> Just grab, oh, grabbing is, loose ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most oh, emotional yeah, I've seen monkey boo in, yeah. in any of the videos. Yeah. 
I know what it's like to have a very flat affect that's only roused by uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the Patrick the restaurant. <laughs> I've never seen. I'm literally, literally I've, this I've, week we were sitting on the steps of Town Hall eating KFC, and I'm pretty sure I said it was the happiest I've ever been. I swear to God, I've never seen Patrick as happy as when we went to KFC a few days ago, and Patrick ordered forty five dollars worth of KFC for all of us, and he felt like the proud dad. He knows <laughs> she is the one who gives Arby's. <laughs> Yeah, there is an incredible. There is, there is okay. So, why, uh, nature, nature. There is no connection between <laughs> two people in the in the wild that is like that between the Arby's giver and the Arby's receiver. <laughs> yeah, I know. You want one more? <laughs> yeah, like- Doesn't matter who shows up in the window next. You're gonna be real disappointed at the next order you have to hand out. <laughs> That's it for Animal Town today. The only animal communities. But before we leave, we're going to rank all of the the, the animals we've talked about today by how much we would want to be owned by those pet owners. Ferret owners are seemingly very wonderful, very caring, and very like emotional. I would I would definitely be putting them in the top tier. The love given to rats, yeah, uh, not just in spite of their reputation, but because of their reputation. It's uh it's so generous, and I think that the 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 closeness of the bonds mm. uh it made me long for something that I don't have, and I think I'm a big rat boy at this point. I'm tending to agree with you. I think I'm putting rats number one because they. You know, in addition to being in, in nice homes a lot of the time, and in I feel like I would make a lot better friends with a rat owner than with a ferret owner. In addition to being in nice homes, it seems like rats also had this incredible um, intelligence and, and care and, and socialness mm. that ferrets like don't actually don't have as much. I think that the idea of keeping a little monkey or a big beautiful bird is still fundamentally barbaric to me. Yeah. I don't want to spend time with reptile owners, but I think reptile owners sit at, at a number even kill number three. I I'm I am going to agree with you there. Um, but disagree that I wouldn't want to hang out with a reptile owner because they seem cool. <laughs> you don't you, want to hang yeah. out with Clint Laidlaw? I would. Lo- sorry, that's fair. You I don't want to, to hang out on the BYU. I would love to be. I would love to be and an toss inc- a frisbee with Clint Laidlaw <laughs> for number four: monkeys or birds. Uh, you know what? In the same way that they shouldn't be imprisoned in a home, I move that they shouldn't be imprisoned in a ranking system, and we should set them free. <laughs> I agree with you going meta on the question, but I still bird number four chimp is I, disgusting. I still feel like no, I don't know, man. Like obviously this is four and five. Like neither of these are good, but I still feel like I'd rather be a monkey in someone's home than like a bird in a cage. They are very close to us. Yeah. <laughs> I think the maybe I didn't I don't know that I spent enough time on it when I was talking about the community, but I think there are very deep, very vibrant corners of the like bir- of people who love birds. Right, whereas there like, isn't that with the with the monkey. With the monkey. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Aiden's putting monkeys at four, Patrick's putting the birds at four. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. We can see people who disagree sometimes we can we can we still have a discussion anyway. That's been our video for today. It's been a lot of fun. If you want to see more videos like this um, I just probably don't do anything. <laughs> we would never tell you to like yeah, and comment I, and subscribe I to would, videos. We would never tell never, you ever. to uh, do... Don't click that a, bell. Do, don't click a bell. Don't su- press the subscribe button. And if you think that we've got the rankings of the animals wrong, uh, let us know. Have a really protracted high engagement argument in the comment section. Be mad. Tell us what you think, but also give us engagement at the same time. Give us interactions. Take care of your animals. Uh, and I think we're going to let uh, a little rock star named Leonard Skinner play us out. Yes. All right. Bye.